Hello, my name is Munali. I am a member of the Board of Directors at the Multicultural Association in Fort McMurray, Alberta. This year, Human Rights Day is observed every year on the 10th of December. The United Nations General Assembly adopted in 1948. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the UDHR, is the milestone document that is proclaimed the inalienable right which everyone is entitled to as a human being. Regardless of race, color, religion, sex, politic or other opinion, national or social origin, property, birth or stat, available in more than 500 languages, it is the most translated document in the world. 2020 theme, Recover Better, a stand up for human rights. This year, Human Rights Day theme relates to the COVID-19 pandemic and focus on the need to build back better by ensuring human rights are central to recovery efforts. We will reach our common global goals only if we are able to create equal opportunity for all. Address the failures exposed and exploited by COVID-19 and apply human rights standards to tackle entrenched systematic intergenerational inequality, exclusion, and discrimination. 10th, 10th of December is an opportunity to reframe the importance of human rights and rebuilding the world we want. The need for global solidarity as well as our interconnection and share humanity. The UN Human Rights 2020 Call to Action, a stand up for human rights, aim to engage the general public to bluster transformative action and, show and showcase a practical and a spiritual examples that can be contributed to recovering better and fostering more resilient and just societies. Human rights must be the center of the post-COVID-19 world. The COVID-19 crisis has been filled by deepened poverty, raising inequality, structure and entrenched discrimination, and other gaps in human rights protection. Only measure to those close to these gaps and advance human rights can ensure we fully recover and build back a world that is better more resilient, just, and sustainable. And discrimination of any kind, structural discrimination and racism have filled the COVID-19 crisis. Equality and non-discrimination are the core requirement for post-COVID world. Address inequalities. To recover from the crisis, we must all address the inequality pandemic. For that, we need to promote and protect economic, social, and cultural rights. Encourage participation and solidarity. We are all in this together. From individual to government, from civil society and grassroots community to private sector, everyone had a role in building post-COVID world that is better for present and future generation. We need to ensure the voice of the most affected, vulnerable, and form the poverty effort. Promote sustainable development. We need to sustain development for people and the planet. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for being a part of this. Hello everyone, my name is Roshni and I'm 10 years old and I'm in grade 5. Today I'm going to talk about human rights and how do we recover better and stand up for human rights during pandemic and post pandemic. World Human Rights Day is celebrated on 10th of December every year. Human rights are basic rights that belong to every human being regardless of race, language, age, religion or any status. Human rights include the right to life and liberty, freedom of opinion and expression, freedom from slavery and torture, the right to work and education, freedom from discrimination. 
Unfortunately for many of us, COVID-19 may have brought extreme hardship and adversity to families from all walks of life, regardless of culture or religion. Wood Buffalo region is being hit hard due to pandemic as many people are jobless and also as small business and local organizations are closed. We should support the affected people in our community by showing love, care and kindness irrespective of color, race, or religion. Everybody should treat, be treated equally in overcoming this situation during pandemic and post-pandemic. We can let our helping hand by donating to nonprofit and charitable organizations so that it goes directly to affected people without any discrimination. Economic, social, and cultural rights should be well protected during and after the pandemic. The recession associated with pandemic will likely further slow down the economic growth and productivity. Due to pandemic, many people were jobless, had less income, and this affects the person's standard of living, housing, food, or more. We as residents of Wood Buffalo can work together forming groups in finding most affected community members and helping them. It should help build back by making human rights and are focused more to recovery efforts. To make future economy more resilient, recovery efforts team should create policies that reflect and encourage the post-pandemic for new types of jobs and businesses by showing fairness, equality, and dignity. Hello everyone, my name is Manoj Napuda. I'm Namita Puda. And today we're going to be talking about Human Rights Day. Today's Human Rights Day. Tell me more about it. So, Human Rights Day is celebrated every year on December 10th. And this is a day when the United Nations General Assembly, the UNGA, did the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. This day not only acknowledges the Human Declaration of Human Rights, but it also acknowledges our rights, our rights to freedom, our rights to speech, and our rights to practice our own religion, but mainly to practice our cultural events throughout the community. I have heard that there have been some inequalities in healthcare during these times. Can you expand on that for me? Sure. During COVID-19, inequalities have increased. The differences of access to healthcare for indigenous peoples and people of color in Canada have been greatly affected. I would like to get a deeper understanding. Can you give me a few examples? Sure. Examples of these inequalities include negligence of treatment and care and limitations of resources. Negligence of treatment and care can further worsen the patient's condition due to delayed treatment. Limitations of resources include mental health services, etc. These inequalities are a major threat to humanity and human rights. Regardless of gender, race, and religion, everyone should have equal access to healthcare. Can you expand a bit on freedom of religion? Of course. So the, we have the right to our freedom of religion. And this is that we can practice our own religion without facing any discrimination. The Wood Buffalo Multicultural Association is doing an amazing job on educating us on other cultures through various programs. Throughout COVID-19, racism has increased. There have been cases of unfair targeting, discrimination, victim blaming, and accusing of one another as a reason for the disease. We should stand together in the face of racism. Supporting one another can strengthen our communities. Racism is an issue we all should address. We should call out racist comments and act on them when we see them. Due to COVID-19, many mental health services have been disrupted worldwide meaning that many individuals' mental health condition has worsened. A step to take is to offer social support, maintaining social connections, and reaching out for help. Strong emotions such as fear and anxiety may increase the individual's risk of contracting COVID-19. Feelings of isolation and depression may increase the risk of suicide. Phone calls or video calls can help your loved ones feel less lonely or isolated. 
Taking care of your emotional health is also important. Take care of your body, reach out to others, and talk to someone you trust. Support from community and having someone to talk to can make a big difference in someone's life. Taking care of our own mental health, um, treating everyone equally, and following COVID-19 precautions makes a big difference. Together, Together we, we can, can flatten the curve. curve. Stay, stay home, home, stay safe. Together, Together we can make for a stronger with a fellow. Thank, Thank you. you. My name is Shown. My name is Catherine Santiago. My name is Rafaida Khalil. My name is Daniela Uche Azala. I'm 15 years old. I am 16. I'm 15 years old. I am 15. And I am 16 years old. Human rights are fundamental rights and freedoms and core values that bring the world together as a whole community. To me, human rights mean that no matter who you are or where you come from, you are respected and have an equal chance to succeed. Human rights can be defined as certain principles or norms that describe standards of human behavior, which are protected by the law. These rights are very basic and belong to everybody in the world from birth. This includes the right to equality and freedom from discrimination. I'm so grateful to live in Canada because of all the laws it has for me to be able to express my voice. What human rights means to me living in Canada is me knowing that I'm able to express what I want to say and say what I want to say without being afraid of any repercussions or being silenced. As an African immigrant to Canada, a human rights issue that is very important to me is the Black Lives Matter movement. It is known that all lives matter, but how can all lives matter if the world isn't treating everybody as equals? The Black Lives Matter movement has been heavily politicized, but at its core, it is a human rights issue. The Black Lives Matter movement is an international fight against racial injustice. Statistics from the most recent census from 2016 show that Black Canadians, specifically immigrants, face heightened economic challenges, such as the wage gap or the high unemployment rates that they experience versus non-racialized Canadians. Despite their efforts, Canada continues to struggle to address the long-standing human rights challenges, including the multiple abuses towards Indigenous peoples. Indigenous women are 4.5 times more likely to be murdered than other women in Canada. The current situation facing Indigenous people in Canada requires urgent action so that every person in Canada can live with health, safety, security, and an equal access to human rights justice. In country Nigeria, they say there are fundamental human rights, freedom of speech, but there really isn't. You get killed if you speak out on it. You, there are repercussions, and we are our voices are suppressed. The government is not held accountable for what they do and what they don't do, especially what they don't do and not being able to provide for the country. The most recent example of this is hashtag NCS. It is a protest of young adults speaking out about police brutality and there were several people killed because they were speaking out and peacefully protesting. The country is not held accountable for anything and it's not the best. So that's why I'm really grateful I live in Canada and know the laws to freedom of speech. The best way to bring awareness to this human rights issue is to talk about it. Once things like fragility and ignorance are put away, then the situation can and will become better.
People often say the world is yours to be free. This ideology, though many people flee, there is nothing worse in this unsavory, monstrous universe than a person in a system with no control of the hope. Like, are people saying all they can do is cope? Like a river, conflict, inequality, poor education flow through their minds. Don't blame it on the child. The lack of infrastructure creates a house, one of which has already been built for them. This house full of bricks and beams of prejudice and stigma. So hammer and destroy that house to crush the systems that are keeping them there, instead of placing the burden on the ones that have to bear. This box, society, put them in all because of their socioeconomic status. The wars they face are as vast as the wars inside their head. Bigger than malaria is the epidemic they think about before going to bed. The epidemic of feeling they aren't doing their best. A virus more powerful than the one they detest. They, they barely, barely have enough funds to see the light of day. day. All because of the color of their skin. And all, all because, because of the, of the white picket fence separating, separating them from their neighbors. The thin line that they are constantly placed in. Their human rights are being taken away. Like the moon covers the sun at the end of every day. Let us be the light at the end of the tunnel as we celebrate the human rights we have today and acknowledge the human rights that are being taken away.